Well, hello everyone, my name is Swigo, and today I'm going to be bringing you my first ever Pokemon Black video, which is, can you beat Pokemon Black as a Team Plasma member? But first, I want to thank my new Patreons, Felipe Morla and A Little Turtle. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. So finally, we will be continuing our Evil Team series. Last time we did, can you beat Pokemon Platinum as a Team Galactic member? So if you haven't checked out that video yet, it will be in the description. This time we're going to be fighting Getzes and turning his own Pokemon, his own minions against him. So what Pokemon do Team Plasma use? Well, in Black 1, they use way more Pokemon than in Black 2, and I will probably be doing a Black 2 video in the upcoming weeks. In Pokemon Black and White they use Sandile, Trubbish, Patrat, Purloin and Scraggy and their evolved forms of course. I think this is going to be very interesting because the EXP system in Gen 5 is really changed around. The Pokemon get way less XP if you fight wild Pokemon. If you fight Pokemon that are under your level you will also get less XP. But what I'm really curious about is which of these Pokemon is going to be the best one. Let's find out. Of course we have to start off our adventure by picking our gender and name which is going to be Zwigo in this one not Bob. We then start off in our own house with our two rivals, Sharon and Bianca, and we get to choose our first Pokemon, which is going to be Trubbish. I mean, of course, I have to start with the trash Pokemon. And then we immediately take on both of our rivals. I switched out Snivy for Trubbish because Snivy would be the worst type advantage against my Trubbish. We easily took down Bianca with the Poison Gas and Pound, and then Sharon went down the same way, while we also destroyed our room in the process. Mom... I think he got some cleaning to do. While arriving in the lab, the professor gives us a chance to nickname our Trubbish, which we're going to be naming Trash because that's what it is. We then immediately start off on our journey by going into the grass and catching ourselves a Pat Rat, which we name Rat Pat. Don't even ask me why. While arriving in the next town, we have our first meeting with Getsis and his little organization. He's telling the people that Pokemon should not be captured in Pokeballs and that they should be free and bloody blah. Blah. And then N comes up to us and says that our Pokemon talks to him and then he wants to fight us. The only Pokemon that he has at this moment in time is a Purloin which we take out very easily with our Trubbish even though that we are one level below his. Also apparently Trubbish has pretty good speed which is something that I didn't expect from a trash bag but hey that's pretty cool after then trying to travel to the next town i find myself a level 7 patrat which is way higher than the one that i caught before so i catch myself a new patrat and name it rat pat once again and i also capture myself a purloin which i'm going to be naming mittens just a generic cat name to be honest also let me know in the comments down below what kind of animals you have at home i, I really want to know or you can join the discord and post pictures of your pets in our pet channel i really want to see all of your guys as good boys and girls and whatever you have. Immediately after I capture myself my new Pokemon, it is time to fight Bianca for our second rival battle. She starts off with her Lillipup and I of course have to start off with my trash bag. I start off by setting up two layers of toxic spikes so that her Oshamod would get poisoned very badly in the next turn that he comes out. Then I just start spamming Pound to take down the Lillipup in a few hits after she heals it up of course because you can't have a game without healing. The next Pokemon was Oshawott so I switch in my Patrat and took him down with 3 tackles combined with the poison damage. We then go to the trainer school and fight Sharon over there. His first Pokemon is a Tepic and I again start off with my trash bag. I start off by hitting him with a few pounds but then I realize that we're probably going to be losing this matchup so then I poison him before we go down. He also healed up with his berry. So then I went into Patrat to finish it off with 2 more tackles. Last up was his Purloin and after hitting us with a few embers from the assist I finally took that thing down as well with just a few tackles. After then grinding up a little bit in the grass, I finally took on the first gym. Since we actually took Snivy and switched it out for Trubbish, we are going to be fighting the fire guy, Chili. He has two Pokemon in this fight which are Lillipup and Pansir. He starts off with his Lillipup while I start off with my Trash. And luckily my Trash also learned Acid Spray which is a move that always lowers the special defense by two stages after the Pokemon gets hit. So this move is going to be very crucial in the whole run. So after hitting him with an acid spray he then sets up with a work up which is his signature move. He then hits me with a bite which doesn't do that much damage and two more acid sprays take down the Lillipop. Pansir then comes out but because Pansir is not the best Pokemon in the world is incinerated barely 
barely does any damage. So we hit it with 3 acid sprays which is enough to take him out while we still survive with just a little bit HP remaining. So then we get our first gym badge and we head to the dream yard to have our first real-ish encounter with Team Plasma doing bad stuff. They're kicking a Muna. That is bestiality. Please stop that. We then beat them up, gets his comes and tells them to stop harassing this poor, poor animal. How he came out of nothing though, I have no idea, but we're out of there really quickly. As we continue our journey, it's time for another rival fight. There is going to be a lot of rival fights in this game, just saying. But I made a mistake going into this fight, I accidentally led with Mitten, so I had to switch out in the first turn. Luckily, Tepix Ember didn't do that much on my trash, so we start hitting it with some acid sprays. Eventually, after hitting it with 4, he finally goes down. Now next up is his Mittens, so I start acid spraying once again, but... She managed to hit me with a sand attack, which lowered my accuracy, which made me miss one acid spray. And she then hits me with two fury swipes to take me down to one health, but we managed to take it out without losing trash. Team Plasma are running away once again because they've committed some crime, so we go and chase after them, beat them up, and get the Pokemon back. And then we arrive in the next city and we go to the museum, but N stops us tells us a few more shenanigans about Pokemon and feelings and stuff and then we beat him up because he's a pussy. He starts off with a pigeon and I start off with my cat and as you know cats kill pigeons but not in this instance my cat is weak AF and actually gets beaten up by the pigeon so I switch to rat path to finish the job with a tackle. Next up is timber and I have the balls to stay in even though that we're weak to it and I actually managed to hit it with four tackles before my pat rat went down to a low kick so then I switched in my final pokemon trash and took it down with two more pounds. Last up is a timpole who I take down with just three acid sprays. I know that the next gym is using evolved Pokemon from level 18 and 20, so I know that I have to do a big grinding session, so I go to the left of the town and grind up in the grass and against all the trainers that are there. Luckily, there are Audinos in that grass which give a load of XP, which means the grinding way easier. So after training up a good few levels, I decide to take on the next gym, which is normal type and led by Lenora. She starts off with her Herdier and I start off with my Mittens. I decide to go for assist and gets as much damage in as I could and I actually got an acid spray which is amazing. So then because we already lowered its special defense I switched in trash and hit it with a sludge but it's left with like 2 HP and it hits me with a leer and then heals up. Luckily we outspeed and two more sludges take down the herdier. Next up is Watchhawk and I know that this thing has some annoying ass moves like Hypnosis, Confused Ray and Retaliate so I decided to go into Rat Pat and hit it with a lot of sand attacks. I actually got so far then to lower its accuracy by 6 which is amazing but then a crunch hits and my pat rat goes down so I have to switch in trash once again. I hit it with a pound it doesn't do enough damage so I go for an acid spray and a sludge and then yet another sludge to take it out because it couldn't hit us anymore because of all of the stat lowerings. With the second badge acquired, the museum is actually under attack by Team Plasma and they steal the head of the Dragonite skeleton, so we have to go and retrieve that. So we did that quite easily and we go straight to the next city and wrap up another organization from Getseth. This time with the help of Bianca, Iris and the third gym leader, Burge? Berg? I'm sorry, I am not good at Gen 5 names. So then we went into the gym straight away and this is a bug type gym, which my team is isn't too well built around. So we lost our first attempt against his first Pokemon Whirlipede, which was very sad. But we went back straight away and this time it went way better. He again starts off with his Whirlipede, but I decide to lead the Mittens this time. We get a little bit of chip damage in with Fury Swipes before we get taken out. So I then switch into Rat Pat to hit it with a big Retaliate because as you might know, Retaliate does more damage if the Pokemon that was before you just got killed. So we hit it with two of those and then with a Leer before we get taken out by a Poison Tail and then I switch in my Trash, which finishes off the Whirlipede with a Takedown. He then switches in his Dwebble and I start spamming Acid Spray, but it manages to hit me with a few Sand Attacks. But we're very lucky because we never miss an Acid Spray in this run, which was amazing. Even though that we get hit with a Smackdown and he heals up a few times, Dwebble goes down. Vivani is his last Pokemon which can't really touch us but it still does enough damage with Razor Leaf even though that it's not very effective. I hit it with an Acid Spray and then it sets up two prote 
effects. Hits us with a Razor Leaf, which leaves us with 1 HP because it was a crit, and our Acid Spray quits as well, which takes out the Leave Vanny in one single hit and wins ourselves the third gym badge. We then go to the desert to lose against Sharon as Pig Knight, but we aren't intimidated by that pig. We go back again, and this time we beat him up. His pigeon takes out my cat once again because my cat is absolutely useless, so I switched in my trash to take it out in two more acid sprays. Next up is a monkey with some broccoli on his head, which I kill with two acid sprays as well. Next up is Pig Knight, and luckily it didn't go for flame charge that much, it just went for defense score a lot of times, which meant that we could take it out with just four acid sprays after he healed up. Then his cat came out, I managed to hit it with an acid spray, but then we get taken out, so I have to switch into Rat Pad to finish the job. Luckily, Luckily we have Retaliate which almost takes down the light part, but another one manages to finish it off and win ourselves the battle. And our Pat Rat also learned Hypnosis which is going to be an amazing move. In the desert I capture myself a Scraggy and I name it SM. I wanted to name it Smash Like but for some reason my hand just clicked OK after SM so now it's named SM but it's supposed to be Smash Like so Smash Like right now. And then we capture our final team member which is Sandile and his name is going to be Twitter where you can follow me on and see me tweet some dead ass memes. We then have a very romantic moment with N while riding the ferris wheel and he almost tries to make a move on us but we go ahead and karate chop his throat and we challenge him to a battle once the ferris ride stops. But did I mention that he has a Sigilyph which is a pretty good Pokemon and that thing actually sweeped my whole team. So I knew that if I couldn't take out N I would not be able to take out the next gym leader so I decided to grind up against all the trainers in the desert. But first I found Bianca once again who got beaten up by our abusive dad because that's just how he is. But the gym leader comes and tells get out of here so he just leaves. So then the grinding finally started and I grinded up my pack rat up to level 20 so that it would evolve into a watchhog. And then I went back to N to fight him once again. It starts off Sandile versus Sandile and even though that mine is 4 levels lower than his, we still come out victorious because of Sand Tomb. Next up is Scraggy so I switched in my trash and hit it with an acid spray but we get confused by Swagger and I go for a takedown but I hit myself in my confusion which does a lot of damage but next turn takedown takes down the Scraggy. So so next up is the big bad boy Sigilyph once again, but he outspeed my Trubbish, which takes him out in one turn with a Psy Beam. So I then go into Rat Pad to hit it with Retaliate and a Bite to take it out. Next up is the Fire Guy, Darumaka, so I switched in Twitter, but we didn't outspeed so we got taken out in one single hit. So Rat Pass has to come out again and hit it with two retaliates to take it down. And then finally tells us that he's part of Team Plasma and that he wants to take over the world and he leaves with his grunts. Whoa, didn't see that one coming. I knew that I wasn't ready for the gym yet so I went and grinded up against some more trainers in the desert that I missed and I grabbed myself the TM for Rock Tomb which I learned to my Sandile as well as Dig. So after then grinding up a little bit more on some more trainers that I found, my Sandile evolved into a Crocorock. So with my buffed up team, I decided to take on the next gym leader which was electric type led by Elisa and she has the most annoying Pokemon ever which are Emolgas with Volt Switch. I had to start the lead with SM but we get taken out pretty quickly by an Aerial Ace so Twitter has to finish the job with three more Rock Tombs. Then it was the second Emolga that came out and that thing went down in two Rock Tombs as well after we get hit with another Aerial Ace. And so last up was Zip Striker who managed to hit me with one more Flame Charge but it wasn't enough to take me down and one dig managed to win us the battle. We then have yet another rival fight with Sharon, so I decide to lead with Smash. But I then decide to switch back into Crocorock to take it out with two digs. Next out was the guy with the broccoli on his head once again, and I was trying to train up Smash Like without actually battling with him, so I switched him in and switched back into Rat Pat to take it out with two retaliates. Then Tranquil, the evolved form of the pigeon, came out, and I switched in my trash back to take it out with two sludge bombs. So then it was the bacon that came out once again, so I stayed in with Trash and took it down with a few Sludge Bombs and my Scraggy actually learned Brick Break as well. We then lowered a bridge to get to the next town. While at the other side of the bridge there was a sheriff there waiting for us to capture some Team Plasma members. We went to the cooler and racked them all up with the sheriff of the town and uh, the town was safe once again. We then went into the mine to challenge the sheriff himself to a Pokemon battle. It was his Crocodile versus my Smasher and my Smasher smashed his 
this crocodile with one single brick break. Next dad was some kind of frog with some bubbles on his ass. So I decided to stay in and took him down with a dig and a brick break once again. Last up was this big mole who kept on digging holes in my backyard so I had to take him out. So after he took down my smash I switched into my rat pant, I retaliated him and put him to sleep with a hypnosis and then confused rim him as well but eventually my rat pat went down when he woke up. But then I had to switch in my own croc down to take him down with a dig. Woof! We finally got our fifth gym badge and now we can head on with our life so we go and explore a cave. After the exploration we try to leave the cave but N is there waiting for us and he wants to battle once again. But he was just using weak Pokemon from that area so I'm not going to be including this fight because it was way too easy. After then clearing all of the trainers in the next few routes my Scraggy finally evolved into a Scrafty. And that's not all, my Krokorok -Croc also evolved into a Crocodile. I then decided to play around with some machines in the gym but this happened and I'm suing this whole gym. A very long court case later and it's finally time for us to take on Skyla. My Crocodile made short work of her first Pokemon Subat with one single crunch. Her big swan then came out and I decided to stay in even though that we were weak to it but luckily we were able to take it out with two crunches because Bubble Beam barely did any damage on our Crocodile. And last up was a Unpheasant who I also took down with two crunches. Very easy gym fight. As I was trying to make my way to the Twisted Mountains, Charon also came and fought me once again. We took down his Unpheasant with two crunches. His Broccoli Ape evolved into a bigger Broccoli Ape who I also took down with my Trash. His Pig still hasn't evolved yet so we take it down with a single dig from Crocodile. And finally, we used Brick Break on his Cat and we took it down in one hit to win ourselves our millionth rival fight. A man with red hair decided to jump off a cliff and break his hip so we had to do him to the hospital. And then we cleared out the mountains and went straight to the seventh gym led by a superhero. But his gym was a one shot sweep with my SM because Brick Break is just way too strong to combine with Moxie. If you don't know what Moxie does by the way, if you kill a Pokemon your attack gets raised by one stage. But with the easiest gym battle out of the way, we go to the Dragon Spiral Tower where we see that a Zekrom has has destroyed this beautiful monument so you're gonna get a big bill in your mail this month and better pay up. Oh, his insurance company is covering it. It's all fine. I then accidentally picked the wrong fossil. Damn, I really wanted that plume fossil, you know. Archaeops is just way cooler than Caracosta. After almost breaking my hip from a sand pit, we finally get to the end of the whole sand thing. And we have to face Getsis there with just some dialogue. We don't even have to fight anyone over here. It was all useless. So so after wasting my time in the desert, it was time to waste some more time at the museum. We talk, blah de blah de blah, I get a white stone, okay bye. Oh and guess what, it's yet another rival battle, just what I wanted. So it's her big dog versus my small trash bag, and as you might know, my trash bag almost lost, we had 6 HP remaining and then I switched into SM to finish off the big dog with a big brick break. We boost our attack with Moxie, next up is Samurott who I take down with a single high jump kick. Next up was the ugliest creation in all of Pokemon and uh, we took that down with one single dig. And then a flying fetus came out who I took down with a single crunch. Yum yum. We then have a talk with the two dragon masters of this game and he tells me that we should take him on at his gym. Drayden honestly looks like the coolest grandpa you could have. Like if you get bullied at school he would just show up and beat up that kid for you. You know that kind of grandpa. Also while grinding up in the gym my Trubbish evolved into a Garbodor. And then I decide to take on Drayden. Luckily his first Pokemon Fracture just kept on setting up dragon dances so my Garbodor took it down with just three sludge bombs. Next up was Dradigon so I stayed in and hit it with an acid spray to lower its special defense and then hit it with a sludge bomb. But then he used Dragon Tail to whip out my, my very own pigeon and if you're wondering why does he have a pigeon, well he's my flyer. So I decided to just throw some Pokeballs at the Dradigon so that my pigeon does not have any impact on the battle. So I then went back into trash to try and take it out with one more sludge bomb but he survived with literally 1 HP and took down my Garbodor. So I then switched in my Rat Pat and hit it with a Retaliate and then confused it, he hit himself a few times 
sometimes in its confusion and then eventually I got him down to red health but he healed him up again and then my red pad went down. I know that Dreadigan is not really that loved by the fans but I honestly love its design. Sadly enough my crocodile had to finish it off with two more crunches. Last up was his Haxorus and I managed to hit it with a dig but it also set up a dragon dance to take me out in one single hit. So my last hope was smash like and I high jump kicked it and it was down. We won ourselves the final gym badge. We then had another rival fight with Sharon which was one of the easiest fights ever. My Garbodor took down his Unpheasant with an acid spray and two more sludge bombs. His Bacon Pig then came out and he killed my Garbodor with a single flamethrower sadly enough. So I switched into Twitter to almost take it out with a single dick. We get hit with a flamethrower due to about half of my health and then one more crunch takes down the Bacon. Broccoli Ape comes out once again and I had jump kicked it and then hit it with a brick break to take it down and last up was his cat once again who I brick breaked in the face to take it down to win our final rifle battle. Then we easily cleared through victory road without any problems and we go straight into the elite 4 starting off with the ghost type elite 4 member Chantal who with our great variety of dark type Pokemon wasn't that much of a problem. She starts off with a Kuffer Grigas who doesn't really do anything against my Crocodile only a shadow ball which barely does any damage and my crunch took it down into red health but she healed him up and one more foul play combined with a crunch took it down. Next up was a thick ass Jellicent, so I decided to go for fall play because I'm stupid, but it didn't do enough damage So we get hit with a surf which does a lot of damage But we managed to take it out with another crunch next up was Gorlurk and because our crunch was disabled I went for fall play and because Gorlurk's attack stat is that high it one shot at him last up was Chandelure And my crunch was still disabled so I went for fall play it didn't do enough damage So we got taken out by a fire blast but luckily enough my smash like finished it off with another crunch Next up was the Dark Type Elite 4 member Grimsley, who I lost a few times to actually because of his Crocodile, but after a few more tries, we managed to finish him off. It starts off Scrafty versus Scrafty, but luckily mine is higher level and two Brick Breaks take down his Scrafty. Next up was another Cat, who faked me out and then hit me with an Aerial Ace to do a lot of damage, but my Brick Break managed to finish it off in one hit. And now the Bisharp came out, which is also a very cool looking Pokemon, but it took me out with another Aerial Ace, so I had to go into Twitter to finish it off with a single dig, which leveled me up and I learned Earthquake which is the key to winning this battle. His Crocodile came out and I decided to stay in of course because mine is higher leveled and two Earthquakes finished off the second Elite 4 member Grimsley. And now it was time for the Sleepyhead Caitlyn which is actually the easiest Elite 4 member for us. Her first Pokemon is a fetus of some sort, I, I don't remember, an embryo Pokemon, <laughs> really weird. Reuniclus, so I hit it with a crunch but it survived by a little bit of health and she healed him up twice more so I hit it with a facade so that he, she wouldn't heal again and one more crunch took down the Reuniclus. Next up was Sigilyph who almost took me down with an air slash but crunch got the better of him and then Gothithel came out who I also crunched in the face to take it out in one hit with already two moxie set up. Last was Musharna and you know that this thing is not going to survive a three times attack boosted crunch in the face. Here I'm going to be taking on Marshall, the hardest Elite Four member and probably the hardest battle in this entire run. Since his Mian Xiao took down all of my Pokemon because it outspeeded all of them, we had a little bit of trouble. And even if we took down the Mian Xiao, he also had a Sock left, which also did a lot of damage. But eventually I found a strategy to take it down without leveling up anymore. He starts off with a buff Judo Boy throw who loves to lower my speed of my Crocodile with Bulldoze. Sadly enough two Earthquakes wasn't enough to take it down because it was left with 1 HP but then after he healed up we got a critical hit to take it out in one single punch. Next up was Conkeldur so I switched into my Garbodor to hit it with an Acid Spray and two Sludge Bombs to take it out. Next up was Sock so so I decided to stay in, hit it with an acid spray and again with two more sludge bombs to take it out. This last Pokemon Mian Xiao comes out so I stay in to hit it with one last sludge bomb before Garbodor goes down. So then I went into Smash Like to hit it with a high jump kick, we almost died because of his jump kick but we took it down in one single hit to take out the last Elite 4 member. We then go to the champion but who's there already? N. He already took down the champion and his big 
fat castle, comes down, shoots some stairs at the castle, I have no idea where this came from, and he tells us that we should go and challenge him at the top of his castle. So after having a very long dialogue once again with N in his throne room, he summons Zekrom, and then my big fat stone starts to sprinkle sprinkle and the big fat white dragon comes out. I really didn't want to use Reshiram, but there is no other way, you have to capture him if you defeat him. He just stays there and you have to battle him once again. And since I only had five Pokemon in my party, he just went straight into the first slot. And we also named him Sub Now, because if you haven't subscribed already, you should do it right now. But we have to fight with our Reshiram against his Sekrom, so I decided to just throw some Pokeballs and stall him out before we finally get taken out. So I then switched into Twitter to take out the Zekrom with two Earthquakes. Next up is some Ice Cream, which I kick out of his hands with High Jump Kick. And next up is his Kling Clang. Oh no, it's actually a Zoro Arc, but it doesn't matter. One Brick Break and it's down. We now have two Moxies set up, so we're looking pretty good. Now the real Kling Clang comes out and that thing also goes down to a single Brick Break. And now the coolest fossil Pokemon of this gen comes out, Archaeops. And I thought that we would maybe survive one single Acrobatus from this thing, but it took me down in one hit, sadly enough. So I went into Twitter to get the Intimidate off and take it out with two Rock Tombs. Last up was Caracosta, so I decided to stay in, but it had Sturdy, so my Earthquake didn't take it out in one hit, and we get taken out by a Waterfall. And so I went into Rat Path and confused it because I thought that it was going to heal it up. But he didn't, and he then took down my Rat Path with a Stone Edge. So I then went into my final hope, Garbodor, to take it out with one last Sludge Bomb, and now it's time for the final fight of this run against gets this. And of course Reshiram doesn't go away from my party so I have to battle with it once again so I just throw some Pokeballs at the Kofagrigas until we go down. So I then went into Smash Like to hit it with two crunches and take it out but sadly enough Kofagrigas had Mummy so my Moxie ability got obliterated. Next up was High Dragon so I stayed in, he hit me with a Focus Blast, we did a lot of damage but we survived and one High Jump Kick took it down. Buffalon then came out and we actually outspeeded it and we took it down with a single high jump kick once again. Next up was one of the coolest gem 5 Pokemon, Electros, so I go into trash to hit it with an acid spray and a sludge bomb before we get taken out by two wild charges. I then went into Twitter to take it down with one single crunch. Seismitoad then came out so I switched into my smash like but he outspeeded and took me down with a single muddy water. So then I went into Rat Pat to put it to sleep with an hypnosis and then I went back into Crocodile to finish off the Seismitoad with two more earthquakes. And his last Pokemon one was a Bisharp which is no match for my Crocodile, so one Earthquake and we are finally done with this game. N gives us a last emotional speech as he flies off with his Zekrom and we can finally finish this chapter. This video was very fun to make because honestly Gen 5 is a pretty good game except for the experience gain thing but besides that I think that it has a really good story and I actually haven't played Black and White 2 ever so I'm probably going to be playing that sooner or later. I might actually stream it, but we'll have to see about that. But would I recommend this run to you? Absolutely. This was so much fun to do. Maybe I should have used more different Pokemon, but why would I do that when Crocodile and Scrafty are so good by themselves? So yeah, those guys definitely were the MVPs. And now I just want to give one last word to the sponsors of this channel, my Patreons. Felipe Morla, A Little Turtle, and Miki Googla. Yet again, thank you so much for supporting the channel and definitely you, Felipe Morla, for becoming a mega swampert. So as always people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.